All right, guys, this one's for the custom builder that's doing architecturally designed one-off homes. Every home's a prototype. How do we solve the issues? How do we get a quote in that we feel confident about? How do we actually uh, go to the customer or the engineers and start to deal with them? And this project's actually built by Norton Homes in Sydney. If you need a good builder, guys, he's an amazing builder. Uh, and you can see, and I'll just quickly just turn on, you know, so you can have a look at the home. It's, it's a beautiful home. It is architecturally designed, as I said. Uh, but, you know, we kind of want to get into the nuts and bolts and the confidence of, of doing projects such as this and figuring things out. And I want to talk a little bit about what happens when there's changes to the plans and show you firsthand how to deal with those changes and how to understand the cost associated with those changes. So I'm going to go back to my structural uh, view here. And guys, to get to these structural views, you need to use the scene tool here. It's going to go and create a whole heap of things from elevations, uh, you know, it's right through to everything that you could require very, very quickly. But you can also add your own. So I'm going to go back to my structure scene here. Uh, I'm going to go structure off to turn into 3D there for me. Go to structure again. And let's have a quick look around. As you can see, it, it's a pretty comprehensive job. Uh, it's almost overwhelming, even when you can see it in this much detail to, to associate a cost with this. And I'm going to talk a little bit about floor joists uh, and so on. So how do I make a model like this actually tell me what I need to know so I feel confident for a project? And the answer is, for Plus Design Builders, you'll notice that you have the Levels tool. And what I've actually done, guys, there's a tutorial up the top here that's going to show you how to add things to levels and so on. And I do recommend that every builder watches it because when you see what I do next, you'll know why. So I'm just going to turn off any levels that I've actually got there. right? And you'll notice that that turned off all my rafters, which simplified things. Now, if you're not a, a, a builder or an engineer, uh, you would probably not understand that we design houses from the ground up Yet we build them, or we engineer them, and we actually structurally design them from the top down. So understanding this much detail and where our load is going to go through the project is you know, paramount to be able to, to build a project. Uh, but I'm going to turn my rafters off here, and you'll see I've got my walls, and I've got joists through. Some of them are cantilevering and so on. And on this particular job, there's been a bit of a change. So in our floor joists, and the reason being is that when the engineer got involved, he goes, oh, well, you know, you can't cantilever that across here. We're going to need another beam. So if I go into here and go, uh, I've, I've just copied that beam. I'm going to go edit, paste in place, right? And this is what the engineer suggested. And that's a bit of a problem because I've got a cantilever of beam through here and it's got to pick up another beam here for the upstairs section. Let's have a quick look at the walls there. Notice I've got a wall through there that has load. We needed to pick that up. Uh, and confidence is what we're, we're going for in this particular project. Now, how do I go about dealing with this? Now, there's some brilliant uh, 3D builders out there that actually will do this stick by stick. And, you know, it's reasonably expensive to do it. Um, and when there's a change like this, it's, it's even more expensive. But it's cheaper to solve things virtually before actually coming across this on site because... These joists have been engineered for spans. Right, so what do I do in this particular instance? Well, there's a couple of things. You'll notice that the fireplace has moved and therefore I've got a joist running through the middle of my fireplace and I also have uh, new, two new beams in here. How do I go about it? I'm going to show you how to, I would deal with this. Mm -hmm. uh, because this has been done in Plus Design Build, it is parametric. So if I went right click and go to my floor joist, I can edit my joist. And the first thing I need to solve is this chimney here. And when we've actually, when we uh, plus design build draws joists, it actually puts in an arrow to show you where the spacings of the joists go through, go from. Now, if I actually change the spacings of these joists and went here and say submit, it changes the spacings of the joists so that it's now spacing from this way and going across here. However, it still hasn't solved my problem uh, for here. So it appears that the only way we're going to use these truss joists is if we decide to change the spacing, which means we would change the thickness of the flooring to do that. So, or the type of flooring, you might use a ply instead of a, a chipboard. So in this particular case, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change the spacings of the flooring and I'm going to go submit. And I'm just gonna see what happens if I change my spacings of the flooring this way. <clears throat> Does it work for this steel beam? That works there. 
doesn't work and still doesn't work over here I'm wondering if I spaced it from the other way I'll, I'll do it so I'm going to select that go submit and I'm just going to change that spacing again I really want to make sure that you're on your axes there notice that went red okay now I've done that that actually works so my joist misses my fireplace now so the original engineering of the joist and the span hasn't changed the only thing I had to do when I did it was to change the flooring and that would, I would just do that down here. So it would be sheet flooring versus ply or whatever type of flooring you're going to change. These are decisions that you make as you go along. Uh, so I'm going to leave that out for a second. And then I also have this issue with these other beams. So what I can do is I can actually right click on the joist again and go floor joist. And if you're not using the void tool, you probably should be because that's how we're going to solve these things. And I can also notice that now my old joist hangers aren't in the right spot. So first things first, I need to solve this issue. Uh, I'm just going to do the end of my beam here, all the way through to the end of my beam here, here, and back to where I started. Did I get that? Yep, I did. Okay, now what you'll notice is it's actually cut those joists now. So if I hit this beam, you'll notice that now I actually have my joist. Now this is going to change the uh, type of joist and you might even find that you may not need truss joist here, but if you're going to have uh, plumbing through here or air conditioning through here with a rake ceiling, which this job does have, you probably will need them. Um, so, and you'll also notice that it actually messed with my spacings of my joist hangers over here, right? You see I've lined one up that worked on a 450 to 600 ratio but it hasn't worked so I need to delete these uh, joist hangers now if I just went right click here quickly and just took this off a quick take off and bring this in it's only going to take off these joist hangers so joist hardware you'll notice that I have six hangers in there probably if I did a take off of the whole lot I'll quickly do that uh, we'll find out how many joist hangers we have at the moment um, framing joist hardware 31 at the moment, so 329, and because I've deleted a few out and so on, it's not ideal. But I find it really frustrating if you go and look in my shed at, at home when I was building, I've got so many brackets and things left over. So I just quickly deleted that. I'll turn my mouse on here for a second. Right. I'm going to go through and I'm going to add in some more joist hangers. And I'm going to delete these joist hangers out of here that are at the old spacing. So delete. And inside of my joist tool, uh, I actually have the ability to add in hangers. If you weren't aware, guys, it is there. And instead of just throwing thousands of dollars at hardware is a provisional allowance, it's nice to know exactly how much you have. So you order the right stuff. Uh, and you'll notice inside of my joist, I have uh, drawer joist hangers. And if I zoom in on my joist, it tells me the size. So I've got a 300 by 90. So therefore my, my hanger height is 300 and my thickness is 90. Now I'm not going to get involved in brands. Uh, I'm just going to start putting some hangers in and I'll, let's just do over here. So what I need to do is I need to go from the center of my beam here. And you'll notice if I move my mouse around, it will change the location of the hangers and which way they go and go here and go enter, right? Same would happen over here. There, there. Now use it, your, 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 um, Floor joists, you know, these are engineered joists, you know, they're going to probably specify, but sometimes it's nice to know. And this one here is actually not required anymore. I could probably just quite easily put some trimmers through there. If you did want to do that, you can just break inside of the group and, and get rid of the one that you don't want. It's going to come out of your takeoff now. Uh, and what else have I got? Is there any other hangers there? Yep, there's a couple more there. Right, so again, just so you know where to find this, if you go to draw joist hangers, Type in your size, 300 by 90. You can change your bracket type as well here. Uh, I'm not going to get into that today. Going from left to right, and I probably actually need one there as well. Right, the engineer will probably certify and specify. Um, you know, especially that being a higher load bracket, you might need to change that to a different type of bracket. I'm not going to get into the engineering today, guys. Uh, is there any others that I missed? Okay, you can see that the old ones are on at 450. My tip is in this particular instance, guys, is to um, uh, go through and uh, do this last. Once the project is going to go into construction, before you're about to order, 
that's when you save your money. You don't really want to go through and do this too early in the project um, just because you're probably best off allowing, over allowing for your joist hangers uh, and your hardware early or you can just delete like I did there and that way you've got a budget for it but you can save your money. So if I actually did a takeoff of this now, let's have a quick look. Uh, take off framing joist hardware okay I'm at 32 but it, there was some m missing there before that I hadn't taken and you can see I've missed a few there guys this is kind of quick but I, I think the moral to the story is when and when things change and, and you're getting detailed models to help you feel confident with your quotes it's really important that you have the ability to change them over and over and over and this video is just a quick representation of how that would work uh, if you've got any questions or you'd like to see how we've gone about some of our roof framing and so on, uh, ask them in the video below, guys, because there are some tricks involved in getting you know, particular strut types in here to hold up my underpurlins, and it can be done really, really quickly. Um, I think the, the, the name of the game is, is when you're doing custom homes, know as much about them as you before you quote them, and before you quote those custom homes, ensure that you're confident that your price is going to cover the cost. A lot of times we do cost plus, if that's the case, cost plus still doesn't cover you guys. You still need to know you need to be confident on what you're going to deliver for the money that you're charging the client. And the client needs to be confident that you're going to be able to deliver as well. So guys, again, if you need any more, uh, if you need any help or you want to um, find out more about Plus Design Build, you can go to our website or type in Plus Design Build into Google. Don't forget to follow our channel below if you're not a Plus Design Build user and you'll notice we've got hundreds of tutorials that enable you to be more profitable as a builder. To you guys.